21st Century Entrepreneurship with Martin Piskarik. You led the university to its status as a top performing public university. With the third highest score in the Florida Board of Governors performance metrics. Uh, there is uh, the Innovation Institute, uh, you started Center for Cybersecurity. I mean, a lot of things going on. A lot. What inspired you to pursue a career in higher education? Well, I didn't set out to do that. Uh, I, I, I was drawn into a career in higher education. Uh, and uh, I often tell students when they ask me if I thought about being a university president when I was in college, I say no, because they didn't make women presidents of anything when I was a student. Uh, but uh, and so I uh, when I finished school, I went and did other things. I was in communication and was invited to teach a college class many years ago, uh, loved what I was doing, and then uh, have been in higher ed ever since. Uh, but what drew me to it was the ability to connect what we sometimes call the real world to the academic world uh, and, and to get our students ready uh, to, to take on an environment that's changing probably even as we're teaching the class. Regarding that, can, can you tell us uh, about your experience as an uh, entrepreneurial leader? What are some of the most important lessons uh, you've learned? Uh, <laughs> I would say keep moving, <laughs> keep moving, <laughs> keep moving and, and adapt, adapt, adapt. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, changes happen. We are a very agile university. Uh, part of that comes from trust um, uh, and ability, you know, that um, my campus needs to trust me to be making good decisions. I need to be trusting them to implement those decisions. Uh, we communicate a lot. The responsibility that I have is to stay ahead of the issues far enough ahead that I can see what's coming so that I can tell my folks <laughs> change is coming and be ready. And so uh, I think for us, uh, this characteristic of agility has made all the difference. Uh, we, I can pick up the phone and get the leadership in my office in a short while. And we are a, you know, a large university uh, by many standards. Um, but um, my uh, direct employees have a lot of responsibility. My vice presidents have a great deal of responsibility. We talk often, um, but my job again is to look ahead and see what's coming so that they can be ready. Does that help answer the question? No, absolutely, absolutely. I, I'm thinking uh, about uh, change. What is your your definition? What is change for you? Well, for us, change is well. A good example was a global pandemic, <laughs> and uh, uh, and having to shut down a campus uh, overnight, and we weathered it very well because we were prepared. We I live in a part of Florida where we have hurricanes. And so we prepare for disruption because it's, it's possible that we could be closed down for six weeks if a hurricane were to hit us directly. And so we had already planned uh, for uh, online learning. We had uh, a, um, a, a module for every course we teach. And so when COVID happened and we had to, we were ordered to shut down. All my faculty had to do was activate the system. It populated their online, uh, you know, framework uh, and they were good to go. And we, others did not, it, it is because we had planned for disruption. Uh, we have to here where we are, 
but it served us well. And, um, and so that, you know, that is one, and of course, you know, political climates uh, change our, um, you know, uh, how we're looked at. Um, uh, we often have to accommodate um, different points of view. And I, I think our success comes from staying focused on our mission. You know, a lot of the rest is noise, you know, uh, you know, political bickering or or even economy. Uh, that's noise. And as long as we know what we're supposed to do and we're clear, as long as we can fulfill our mission, we're OK. And I think that keeps people feeling um, supported. And um, and when we can't fulfill our mission, then we'll have a different conversation. But they know what we're here to do. And we talk about it all the time. And what, and what were the, the, the biggest challenges uh, in the process? Uh, with the pandemic? Yes. Well, oh my goodness. It certainly, you know, just because guidance changed daily and we were, you know, there's a lot of people that you're trying to keep healthy. Uh, and so uh, the very fundamental was what met, what guidance do we need to give our employees and our students as far as taking care of themselves? And then how do we continue to teach college? You know, in, I mean, in, in the middle of it all. And uh, as I often ask, is anybody learning anything? Because if they're not, what's the point? So, so, uh, so we were keeping an eye on the challenge was balancing what we are, or what we are supposed to be doing, and that is providing high quality graduate and undergraduate education again in an environment that was incredibly unstable and incredibly uncertain. We we didn't know if we'd be closed a month, a year, <laughs> and turned it. it it turned to be a, almost a year before we were uh, essentially back on campus. And then there are just the, um, you know, we we have people who live on our campus that we had to take care of. We have employees who had myriad concerns. They, they had parents who were vulnerable. Um, and so we were constantly juggling, but, um, it, it worked out. <laughs> it, it's, uh, it worked out because, um, and I, I told the campus, I said, today's advice is the best we can come up with. If it changes, I'll let you know. Uh, and so, but it's back to that adaptability. Can we, can we do things differently? And, uh, and a lot of trust. I don't think we didn't experience people who thought we were not that, I believe everyone knew we had their best interest at heart. And, and the, the, the students, I mean, they are Generation Z and uh, they are, oriented to new technologies and what what do you think sets uh, generation z apart from other generations and why is it important for them to be motivated and educated on the first place you know i think they've probably experienced more change than any generation uh and I, as i told our students you know during the the worst of the pandemic Take good notes <laughs> because you're experiencing something that um, no one alive has uh, and you're learning from it. And so I think they are learning the value of adapting. Um, I think that um, even five years ago, the idea of employees working remotely was very uh, unusual. And so I think in many ways, you know, all of the changes that they've experienced are beneficial to them because they know the world can get turned upside down and they can be okay. Uh, they just have to figure it out. So, and they have the tools and they have the tools to do that. 
What do you think uh, the role of education is uh, in fostering innovation? Well, I think it, uh, you know, certainly it, the more you, the better educated you are, the more you understand what has come before. Uh, you, have, it, you have learned solutions that have been tried. And so there's a foundation uh, of understanding. Uh, and then uh, we like to think that our students also have developed the kinds of skills and are ready for jobs and careers that have not even been invented yet because they can work with a team. You know, we are humans and humans have survived because we know how to work together. That's how we've made it. They can work with a team. They can communicate and reduce, you know, we have so much information flying around. And, but if they can reduce what they know to a, a succinct uh, few paragraphs uh, that can be shared, that's huge. Uh, just those two skills alone, and then they will be ready for whatever comes next. They also have this wonderful benefit of talking with people in Croatia <laughs> who uh, that we didn't have uh, as we were starting our careers. They can, they can touch the rest of the world uh, and uh, learn how, uh, learn new strategies if they will tap into them. But what they have to be willing to do is, uh, is change. Change, uh, disruption. What, uh, what do you see as the biggest opportunities for, for universities in general to capitalize uh, on in the future and for your University of West Florida, per se? Well, I think it is certainly universities are, traditionally do not move very fast. And so I think the best lesson from recently is that we need to toss out um, old ways of changing curriculum. Um, and we are, uh, and we need to uh, listen to our employers, the people in our communities who are accepting our students. And when they say, when they tell us what skills our students need, we need to adapt to those very quickly. Uh, but I also think there will always be a place for learning. Uh, and we occupy a very important place in society. I think education is the answer to every question. <laughs> and so, you know, uh, the more you know, uh, the more problems you can solve. So I think there will always be a role and that gives me a great deal of comfort. Will it be shaped the way the traditional universities were where students went off to school and stayed for four years and left. And uh, I think we'll see a much more immediate interaction between universities and their students. And then, you know, this concept of lifelong learning. We spend a lot of time with our cybersecurity program, uh, upskilling and cross-skilling people uh, who, who, you know, businesses realize they need this skill and they need someone to take their current employees and get them ready for tomorrow. And that's another place that universities can make a big difference. And you have a lot of experience in cybersecurity as, as, as well as public relations, crisis communication. Can you share some of your best practices for dealing with these types of situations? Uh, well, in, in cybersecurity, of course, we started our cyber, Center for Cybersecurity and it was, we hit, uh, we were in the right place at the right time, uh, made a strong impact and have been able to be a leader among higher education. We help other universities get their programs up and running. 
uh, public relations in crisis, uh, again, you know, the value of communication makes a big difference there. You know, uh, leadership must be present um, and, uh, and visible uh, when you have crisis or any public relations issues. Uh, and so uh, I think the lessons are always, as the environment changes, um, leadership needs to be visible and they need to be adaptable. What advice would you give to aspiring university leaders? I, I usually always say, don't hesitate to ask for help. Be willing to ask for help. You don't have all the answers. Sometimes young leaders or new leaders in particular don't want to appear vulnerable and, uh, and that's dangerous. Uh, develop a, 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 a network of colleagues who are like you or, you know, have similar experiences. And if you have a problem, pick up the phone and call them. They will help you. There are always people out there to help. Uh, too many people don't. It seems you have a lot of things to do on a daily basis. What's your daily routine? I am up at 4 a.m., uh, usually doing uh, emails and uh, that came in the night before and reading uh, blogs and media. And then at five, my husband and I go for a long walk. We usually walk for about an hour or so. Um, and um, it, that gives me time to plan my day. He's a good uh, colleague in that he's, he helps me think through things. <laughs> Uh, and then, but also if I don't get exercise first thing in the morning, it's not going to happen. I'm too busy. I lose control of my day. And uh, so I make sure that I'm up and I'm up early and I've, I've gotten those important things out of the way. Uh, and then the rest of the day is, it just depends. Lots of meetings, <laughs> lots of interruptions, lots of phone calls. Um, I may be in uh like our state capitol, working with the legislature. I may be making calls on alumni or donors. Um, my favorite day is when I'm working with my team. That's always the best for me. Is there any other motivation during the day besides the, the teamwork? Well, I, you know, we also have seven children and 11 grandchildren. And so, uh, and my grandchildren ha are getting old enough now that they understand FaceTime. And so I'll be in the middle of a meeting and this little call will come up and it will be my, you know, six-year-old granddaughter. <laughs> and so, uh, and so if I can, I'll stop and take that call. And that makes, makes for a happy day. What's your sweetest dream and, and worst nightmare? This is going to sound a little corny, but I'm sort of living the dream. Uh, I'm, I'm working for a university that I really care about. This is a labor of love for me. Um, I'm, you know, in what many people would call, you know, the twilight of the career. Uh, but I, I, I believe in what we're doing and good things are happening. So that's the good. Of course, the nightmare is always on any given day, things can, can blow up. Um, uh, you know, we can have a, a, a natural disaster. Uh, we can have uh, disruptions that we don't uh, understand. And I think the worst for me would be if we would not, if we were unable to do what we are here to do. If some, some disruption kept us from providing an education, that would be the worst. You in five years, university in five years. 
Oh my gosh. Well, in five years, I'm kind of hoping I am handing off <laughs> this job to someone who respects us for who we are and will stay a long time. Um, uh, we've, uh, the university is in very good shape. We have grown as we should. And I want them, I, I want to hand it to someone that I can feel good about. And then I'm going to go back to teach. Uh, uh, I started out in, in the classroom and that's where I'll end up. 21st Century Entrepreneurship with Martin Piskorik.